Hey everyone, this is Nick from Mecca Warehouse and uh, today I'm uh, basically here to introduce to you uh, a quick video that we put together. Uh, we basically asked uh, Justinius Builds and Nickel Models to give us some tips that might be useful for you if you are competing in the repaired contest or even if you're not, they're, they're great tips in general. This will be the first of two, maybe three videos depending on how the editing of the footage we have comes out and how we decide to organize that. Uh, but basically, uh, Justinius Builds is going to talk about uh, adding some some wear, making that model look like it's you know needed to be repaired, and help with some of that contrast between the repaired and uh, not repaired sections of the model. And uh, Nickel is actually talking. Uh, in the, his clips about uh, kind of masking seam lines. You know, when you want to get a seam line in between or a, a panel line in between two two parts that you're putting together and try to make that, uh, you know, kind of fit in with, with the design of the model. So hopefully these tips are helpful. Uh, enjoy. Hey guys, it's Justin again with another quick tip for you guys. Hey guys, it's your buddy Nick, AKA Nickel Models and Nickel Arts if you follow me on Instagram. You might also see me hanging around the Mecha Warehouse Discord from time to time. Or if you've just been to the website lately, maybe you've seen some of the artwork that I make. Yep, I'm the guy that draws all the cool pictures of blue. What I'm gonna show you today is how to create these scars and these scratches around your parts. So let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Make sure we get everything in focus. And we're gonna take the piece in question. Now, I'll zoom back in for just a second to show you. I've already started this process just a little bit on this piece right here. Um, so there's a couple little scratches and dings. Uh, I just wanted to kind of get the process started and show you what I use to do this. Um, now there's a bunch of ways you can do this, but I literally use one tool for all of this. It's a flat um, file. It's one of these uh, wider ones that kind of tapers down. Um, and this one, as you can tell, is not in the, the best of shape, but it does in fact get the job done. You can also use probably a triangle file would probably work really well. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick the area you want to leave that scratch. Now, you might want some of these scratches to continue across multiple parts, in which case you'd want to put the piece together a little bit and then kind of start it in one, you know, while it's together and then uh, take it apart and then work on the fine details. Um, with this, I want to tell a bit of a story. So obviously a lot of these pieces are gonna be beaten and banged up. Um, that's kind of the point, half the point of what we're doing here. Um, but I also want to tell a story. I want this to be something that was maybe found or uh, reclaimed and then repurposed. So this, from what I can tell, I don't know anything about Mechatro or where it's, where it's uh, from or what it is or what it does, but from what I can tell by looking at it, it looks like some sort of either transportation or utility robot. Um, it seems that somebody sits inside of here and it just kind of helps you lift heavy things, maybe get from point A to point B a little bit quicker. Uh, stuff like that. Um, now, I want to tell the story that this thing was maybe not in the best of shape. It wasn't taken super good care of. Um, and then uh, somebody's trying to fix it up. And they might not, maybe these aren't in production anymore and the parts are harder to find. Or maybe they're having a hard time collecting the funds to do so, so they might buy some parts secondhand and try to fix them themselves, things like that. Um, so with this piece, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create a couple scratch effects. Um, I might grab like an arm panel here, we'll go ahead and do one on the arms as well. Um, and then just create a couple of scratches and go from there. So what I do with this is I will take one of the corners of this file. I'll do my best to kind of balance it on here. And I'll just kind of drag this forward and back a couple times to kind of create a little bit of a, that little effect right there. There you go. So once you get that started, you just kind of, it's pretty easy to adjust the angle a little bit and make it just a little bit bigger. 
So the more you do this, the more you're going to obviously remove plastic. And you're going to create that, that dipped effect, like something has slashed or fallen on this, or maybe it's cracked. Um, and then I would recommend coming in and just kind of softening it up just a little bit. You don't have to like completely smooth it out, but soften it a little bit. Because if it's really jagged, it's going to look um, a little intense, unless that's what you're going for. Now, another thing you can do is around edges here, you can just kind of dig the corner of this file in and just one little pass and then bear down a little bit more on some of them, a little bit less on others, and just create that kind of jagged edge. And it looks like the metal's been banged up against something and it's, um, you know, chipping away. And this is going to help you kind of identify where you want to paint chips and stuff later. You can also drag these up a little bit higher to look like maybe this hit something a little bit harder, a little bit sharper. Um, and further, um, I guess, exaggerate that effect. So the key thing for me to think about when working on a, a themed project, specifically one like uh, the one we're working on now, is the story that's involved with the model you're making. You know, it's going to influence everything from how this model goes from point A to point B. Everything from the plastic to the paint is going to be influenced by the story of it. And having that clear view in your mind will help you figure it out. And, and if you're at a standstill thinking, you know, this just looks like something I slapped some extra parts on, well, how do you blend those two parts together? Because the repaired build off is really asking us kind of to kit bash in reverse if you think about it uh kit bashing generally you want to take a bunch of parts that somewhat look like they go together and really make them look like they go together well we're taking a bunch of parts that for the most part don't belong together i mean the model i'm working on is a ground gun to mix with goof parts you don't get more <laughs> you don't get more opposite than that hopefully you know by the end of what i'm you know, talking to you guys through, maybe you have some clear idea of, of how to do this and, and then how to do uh, whatever it is you're struggling with, or maybe it gives you a fresh new idea on how to think about it. Um, and hopefully a couple of the little techniques I'm going to show you guys now uh, will help you maybe bridge that gap just a little bit. Let's take a second to talk about normal parts that you might just want to dress up a bit. Uh, the technique I'm going to show you guys is one I use all the time to create a recessed panel line in a clamshell part without needing fancy tools or you know expensive gadgets. It's really simple to do. You do it with an X-Acto knife or any hobby knife and a scriber, the scribe being the only tool that you'll actually need. Uh, it is a fantastic um, technique to use to get uh, a really nice effect and to not have to worry about sealing parts. Um, if you do want to seal parts, you need to do the technique first and then seal the part. And I'm gonna show you that now. Um, I am gonna kind of mix it up with this part and seal it and do the uh, technique. Uh, but let's show you that now and we can talk about it. Now to achieve this, we're gonna have to separate the part. We take our knife. In this case, I'm gonna use a ceramic blade. You can use uh, any hobby knife where it'll work just fine. Uh, I just like the ceramic blade because it makes it a little smoother and then you don't have to worry about it skipping and causing a little bit of a dent. Um, you're gonna wanna use the part that has the the female holes the peg inserts you can use the other side but you have to worry about the peg getting in the way so the basic idea here is that you come in and you want to bevel the spot that you want the recess to be so you'll bevel it and then you'll clamshell the pieces back together and you'll scribe down that bevel and it'll make a really nice recessed piece um, i am not going to do it over the entire line because i want the outer parts of the armor and the spine or the spike to have uh, to be sealed so they look like one part. Um, so I'm just going to show you it on the large curves here. So let's get to it. Okay, so just gently kind of sounds awesome, but it's very effective. Um, if you start doing this and you find that you have a really hard time seeing the bevel, you probably, you might be able to pick it up here. You can take a Sharpie. I'll show you on the other side. You can take a Sharpie. I think this one will show up and you can mark it like so and then as you scrape along the mark 
obviously it'll remove the paint. My, my biggest recommendation would be to start around the edges, do this light chipping. Um, you know, don't go around every single edge of every single piece, but grab some of the more important ones, the forward facing ones, the ones that are definitely going to receive wear. Uh, grind down some corners. There's this little edge here. I just want to round that out and make it look like uh, the the sharp tip of that has worn down a little bit to a little bit more nothing. Um, but work your way around that edge and then maybe pick out a spot where you would go, well, you know, maybe something fell on this or maybe, maybe this banged into something. Um, work your way around. Uh, do a bunch of pieces, jump around on a couple different spots, you know, do the edges of one, maybe put a little slash in something, then go to move to another arm. Um, work your way until you, you're comfortable with where you're at. Put everything together and look at it. Assess where there needs to be more with the story that you're trying to tell. Um, it doesn't have to be every single piece. It doesn't have to be um, the same technique. You you could even use different shapes. Like I said, I'm using a, a triangle file here. You can use the flat file to get slightly different effects, the round file. Um, the last thing I do want to show you before we cut this one is um, like little um, holes, I guess. I just take this file and just spin it around and create a little ding. And then I can't find where I put my knife because all you need is to poke your knife in there, twist it around a couple times, and you've got a little hole. Wow, it's literally right next to me. There we go. So, And then no more than that. And you've got a little hole right there. Uh, now, again, you can take your file. You can stick your file in there and kind of widen that up a little bit if you want. It'll also kind of soften those edges up a little bit for you. You can use a larger file to make a different shaped hole. And this looks like maybe not necessarily that it was shot at, but maybe, um, you know, things happen. Maybe they were going to drill rivets in here. I don't know. But create some wear and tear on your surface because if you want something to look repaired, you need something to contrast with that. Um, Play with the surfaces that aren't going to be repaired before you start thinking about what's going to be repaired. This will be a little easier if you're going to be doing any kind of kit bashing. If you plan on combining more than one model kit, um, maybe weather and damage the original model kit and then start incorporating okay. parts. You should be able to see the bubble quite nice now uh, with your paint. So you take the pieces and you'll put them back together. And now you should be able to see that there's already a nice little divot line there. Uh, so I guess realistically, you could leave it there if you wanted. So you can see the original panel line. It's just, I mean, where the parts connect, it's just kind of there, but you can see the actual uh, where we beveled. Um, I guess if you wanted to, you could just leave it there if you didn't have a scribe or something. Um, but if you keep your pieces together, you keep a little more pressure on and then you run the scribe through, you'll get a really nice clean mark. All right, let's try this. Just go slow. You do want to keep pressure so you can see it slipped a little bit. You want to keep the pressure on both sides, just pulling up a little material at a time. Oops. And you always want to try to run it through back. Um, the similar amount of times that you did the first time, that's typical panel line technique. Uh, I'm not going to do it as many for this time because I cut those first a couple real deep. Um, but you can see that it actually creates a nice little bevel. And you have your recessed part there. And if we come in with a little bit of, where's my stuff? You come in with a little bit of sanding paper. Give it a little, ta, 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 clean it up, and there you go. You have your bevel. 
Very simple, very easy, and very effective. It gives you a nice look. You don't have to worry about having a fancy tool. Uh, they definitely do make a tool that just does this. It just like scores along uh, the part when it's open. But if you don't have money for that, or if you just need a different, you know, you just want to try to do it on your own, it's very, very simple. Thank you, Justinius Builds and Nickel Models. Uh, definitely check them out on uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube for Justinius Builds and on Instagram for Nickel. Uh, in fact, Justinius Builds has uh, another clip he put together uh, that you might find useful in the same vein uh, with, with some other tips. So check that out. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.